Hi there everybody, Adam Cleary from 442 here and I want to talk today about Fabio Carvalho. Because I think when he signed for Liverpool not that very long ago, we all thought, blimey, what a good bit of business that is. He's technical, he's skilled, he's young, he's versatile, he's hungry, he felt like the perfect mix of all the things in a footballer Jurgen Klopp already really likes and given that Liverpool were about to enter this period of tactical transition and change, the kind of player he really needed. But now, some 12 months in a measly four count and four Premier League starts later, he's off to RB Leipzig. And while, yes, all the noises from the club are, it's just for a bit of game time honest, most Liverpool fans aren't convinced they're ever going to see him play for the club again. So... What went wrong then? Well, our very good friends over at This Is Anfield have prepared the following report for us. And here, with that report, is me. So... When Liverpool completed the signing of Fabio Carvalho, it was viewed as a major coup. A deal was initially agreed at the close of the January transfer window in 2022, only for EFL red tape to rip up the paperwork and ensure he spent the rest of the season as a Fulham player. That was, weirdly, always the plan anyway, with a loan already agreed upon the deal's conclusion. But instead, Liverpool were left with no concrete guarantees he would then eventually join in the summer. But three months later, a £7.7 .7 million transfer was waved through and Liverpool successfully fended off interest from Barcelona and others to get their man. By May, Carvalho switched to Anfield was official and Jurgen Klopp lauded him as a player who can bring a stadium to its feet. He can play so many different positions for us, the way we play, he explained. At the minute, he's not really set on one position. It's the wing, it's the eight, it's the ten, it's the false nine if he grows a few more muscles. And the glimpses during pre-season were tantalising, with Carvalho dazzling in a left-sided role as Liverpool tore apart RB Leipzig in a 5-0 friendly win. But less than a year on, the 20-year-old is on his way to Leipzig to spend his second campaign as a Liverpool player out on loan. It's pretty clear then that things didn't pan out as either Carvalho or Klopp would have hoped, even though there were flashes of that quality throughout the season. Back-to-back -back goals against Bournemouth and Newcastle stood out as highlights, with the attacking midfielder featuring prominently in those first four months. After that, though, came an almighty drop-off. Between the return from the World Cup and the end of the campaign, Carvalho only played five times, with his two starts over those six months coming in domestic cups. Klopp, however, remained effusive in his praise of Carvalho and sympathetic over his position. Though question marks were raised over his maturity by Portugal under-21s manager Rui Jorge, who was disappointed that the player couldn't pick up the phone to explain his decision to pull out of contention in November. And for all the applause over his efforts in training, the proof was there in the lack of game time. Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott benefiting instead and both establishing themselves in the first team. It quickly became apparent that the versatility that made him so unique upon his arrival served as more of a detriment than an advantage. Carvalho was trialled in various roles, including as part of the midfield three, but the attacking instincts that saw him score 10 goals and assist 8 times in 36 games for Fulham needed to be paired back as the defensive discipline took priority. But similar to the player he effectively replaced, the popular but peripheral Takumi Minamino, it was clearly not a natural fit for him. And with Liverpool struggling for much of the season, it was perhaps no surprise that the manager felt unable to integrate Carvalho into his system while he was not fully attuned to his off-ball responsibilities. And that isn't to say he can't press, more so that the nuances of Klopp's system were never natural to him. And a stark contrast to his situation came with the signing of Cody Gakpo in January. A career winger, the Dutchman swiftly slotted into the false nine role Klopp claimed could become Carvalho's if he grows a few more muscles. Gakpo, however, made the transition to Roberto Firmino's job as connector look easy and, standing at 6'4 to Carvalho's 5'7, the youngster hardly stands a chance against him in the Premier League. 21 appearances across the season, of which only 8 came as a starter, was clearly not what Carvalho would have wanted or even expected when he decided to leave the comfort and promise of a promoted Fulham and, well, rumblings of discontent began as soon as the season drew to a close. Despite alleged interest from elsewhere in the Premier League, including West Ham, Brentford and Burnley, he has instead decided to head abroad. At face value, joining Leipzig, who finished third in last season's Bundesliga and only five points behind title winners Bayern Munich, is a promising move for him. But that Liverpool were unwilling to agree to his sale or even an option to buy in his loan deal suggests they remain hopeful of his long-term future at Anfield. 
that or they are at least confident that he could secure a higher fee next summer after his season in the spotlight in Germany. Leipzig's permanent offer was reportedly around the 12 million euro mark which was seen as derisory and, well, it's hard to disagree. Due to the terms of their agreement with Fulham, which did include a sell-on clause, Liverpool would stand to take less than £2 million in profit from a sale at that level. And sadly, there are more instances of Liverpool players departing the first team on loan and never reclaiming their role than there are to the contrary. But Carvalho can still look to the likes of Elliot, Minamino and Divock Origi of examples of it working out. If a long-term stay on Merseyside is what he wants, he wouldn't be the first to make it happen. Origi's stint at Wolfsburg in 2017-2018 did seem likely to pave the way for a permanent departure, but he went on to spend the next four seasons in Klopp's senior side, scoring, as Liverpool fans will surely remember, some of the most important goals of his reign. One in the uh, 2019 Champions League final, for example, being a pretty big deal. Circumstances can then change and Carvalho will only turn 21 in August, but there is certainly still a chance he emulates Elliot's success at Blackburn and returns as a focal part of Liverpool's plans. After all, Klopp himself did describe him as both a short-term and a long-term project upon signing him. But that so few opportunities did come his way even after Klopp switched to a 3-4-3 system which on paper better suited his qualities could be damning evidence. In theory, the overlapping left side role that saw Jones thrive as one of two number 10s could have been perfect for Carvalho. But the sum total of his exposure in the new box midfield setup was a six minute cameo when Liverpool were already 3-0 up to a struggling Leicester. But what was perhaps more noticeable was his muted reaction during their post-match celebrations. With the players and the away end enjoying their win, Carvalho instead left his teammates and headed for the tunnel. It was only at the behest of his manager that he then turned back around and rejoined the group. And while that might be slightly poetic given his current circumstances, when it comes to his overall future at Liverpool, it might take more than a hug and a kind word to change his mind. A long year awaits then at Leipzig, and in that time his parent club will be hoping they can turn their own fortunes around after dropping out of the Champions League places last season. The temporary agreement obviously leaves a lot up in the air, but it's hard to escape the feeling that both Liverpool and Carvalho will move on without each other in the coming 12 months.